Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Noodle here, and uh, today we're back, back again, back with more Sin with Sacrifice, uh, part four? Part four. So, uh, so yeah, last time, uh, we beat Val Robin, and we have now also have beaten Cert, that was in the second video, I believe, so we'll be opening now the gates of Helheim. they came through stormy black seas they raided these shores do you still hear his screams and now that your home he's so far away they've taken his soul gods you cannot pray they can break you but not your promise even death won't keep you apart through his darkness you will find him in your sword still beats a heart you fought for love unspoiled by your darkness within you fought for your dreams now there's no way to win in the head of his corpse lies the seat of his soul. So you must carry his vessel to bring him back home. Sword still beats a heart. The darkness touched you. Everyone could see it in the hollows of your eyes. A gaze averted. From light. You ran from it but brought it nearer, led it to him, and then 
endless suffering worse than death. And you wanted to surrender, abandon and find peace with the gods. No. The darkness won't allow it. So you will walk into the lair of the beast. Look it in the eye, and you will go to war. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. What a hell of a way to start this fucking episode. So, before I go into the bridge, it's kind of assumed to catch everybody up. So, they're telling the, the story in pieces, so I'm not going to give everything away. But basically, she went to the wilderness, right? She left for some reason, went to the wilderness to find her own demons and fight the darkness so she can come back and marry Dillian. And while she was in the wilderness, she almost died, got saved by Druth, and they kind of saved each other. Druth ended up passing away. She came back home to, to come back to Dillian and then found her entire village raised and Dillian dead. So now you're kind of the quick synopsis. Fuck off into the sea of knives, bitch! Fuck off, bitch! <laughs> and ain't nobody got time for that shit. Every gate you open into darkness brings another chance. I'm not in control of this fight, by the way. Not yet, anyway. But now we have a Berserker. <laughs> fucking kidding me <sighs> that's so much bullshit that was so much bullshit y'all know that was bullshit they took away half my damn health before we even got started with the fucking fight. He's not too fast, he's a slow piece of shit. By the way, there's no blocking his attacks. It's nearly over. Oh shit, that almost fucking got me. Shit. Oh, come on, bullshit.
We're gonna save the focus. Alright, fucko, come on. You gotta keep them un unbalanced. I hope nobody fucking sneaks up behind us. Fucking hell, we cannot keep falling like that. That was a cheap shot at best. Cheap shot. That pissed me off. That was... I was half dead when the I fucking started that fight. The journey to Helheim is never mm. a straight one. Each must find their own path. Align yourself to its secrets, and you will find yours. However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to hell to join her slain love Sigurd and is challenged by the giantess. Okay. This is cool. These broken fragments that are floating, we have to we have to put them in a shape. It's a little trick we learned from Valravin. So now there's a staircase there that we can utilize. Don't be fooled by that crap down there. Uh, let's see. Um, how did we do this one? Was it out here? It wasn't the mass of the ship. Rightly remember. I think this one was like this. No. I know that there's a thing out here. Let's go do that first. I believe this is another face. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's another face. Yep. Oh, Senua. Your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help. Even if it displeases him. Alright. So, Dad doesn't like the crazy. No bother. 
has nothing to do with us solving puzzles today. Uh, that's a way down, I believe. Alright. So we got this one. Um... I kind of swore this was it. Yeah, see, I was right. And then now we have the X. Which the X, I believe, we can only do from the ground. So we'll we'll drop down, we'll open that door. Get the Druid Stone. We're kind of flying through this puzzle here. Large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gits. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold, all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh. And her face, menacing and grim. There we go. See, that wasn't too bad. Took a little creative thinking. Here we go. Hey, Noodle! Mind if I cut in here before you cross the bridge? Oh, uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess. Cool. I'm just excited. Alright. Have at it. Hey, everyone! My name's Silly, and this is my deep dive! In this video, we'll be covering the gods and goddesses of Norse mythology. Now, as a warning, we may miss a few because the Pantheon is quite large, but we'll try to cover everyone as best as we can. Before we get started, it's important to reference that there are actually two tribes of Norse gods, the Asir and the Vanir. To make a long story short, one day the Vanir showed up to Asgard, and the Asir gods didn't take too kindly with the invaders. There was a war between the two tribes, and in the end there was some sort of peace treaty made between the two tribes. Most of the Vanir went back home happy with the truce, and some decided to stay and help the Asir. So when we talk about the gods, keep in mind that some are originally Asir, and some were the Vanir that decided to stay. To start the list, we should start at the top, and that would be Odin, the Allfather. He's the all-inspiring leader of the gods, who is on an unrelenting quest for knowledge. He's the god of war, and also the god of poetry and magic. He gave the gods the magical runes by hanging himself from Yggdrasil, and even sacrificed one of his own eyes for wisdom. Oh, and as a side note, in recent history a lot of white supremacy groups are claiming the Norse runes as their own symbols, and that's just not cool, and absolutely not okay. Those runes go back to ancient times, and it saddens me to see them misused for the purposes of spreading hatred. Honestly, douchebags, go make up your own symbols, and stop stealing stuff and twisting it to your own political means. Anyways, carrying on, Frigg, Odin's wife, was the paragon of beauty, love, fertility, and fate. She is the mighty queen of Asgard, and is the only goddess allowed to sit with Odin. Frigg is also known to be the protective mother, and one who wields the power of divination. Baldr, the son of both Odin and Frigg. He was described as being the epitome of radiance, beauty, kindness, and fairness, and was a fan favorite of the gods. 
He was also thought to be immortal, but he was kind of killed by a missile too, thanks to Loki. Thor was Odin's widely most known son. He is known as the protector of humanity and the powerful god of thunder who wielded a hammer known as Molnir. He was best known for his bravery, strength, healing powers, and righteousness. Freya is one of the most sensual and passionate goddesses in North mythology. She is associated with a lot of qualities as Frigg. You know, love, fertility, and beauty. She is also credited for the creation of gold and is the leader of the Valkyries. Being the leader, she also has first pick of the dead before they're chosen to go to either Valhalla or Hell. Also, yes, she has a chariot pulled by two cats. That's super rad. Freyr is one of the most respected members of the Vanir clan and is also brother to Freya. He's not only a fertility god, but he was also a symbol of pleasant weather conditions and prosperity. Also, as a side note, he was also portrayed with a large, um, <clears throat> weapon. <laughs> Hemdol is another son of Odin who takes his seat atop of the Bifrost. Uh, that's the rainbow bridge that connects Asgard to Midgard. And it's there that he remains forever on alert, guarding Asgard from any kind of attack. Like the one that's gonna happen at Ragnarok. Hel is the goddess and ruler of the Norse underworld known as either Hel or Helheim. Yes, they share a name. She is easily identified as being half alive and half dead. And despite how games and movies portray both the goddess Hel and her realm Helheim, neither is really evil by nature or cruel. In fact, anyone who did not die a warrior's death, like you or me, would be sent to hell after we pass away. The goddess Hell will shelter us, nurture us, and take care of all the dead who were not fortunate enough to be chosen to go to Valhalla, or with the goddess Freya. She's actually rather nice, but everyone seems to fear her because of her appearance. That, and she's also the only known daughter of Loki. And last but certainly not least is the god Loki. Loki is an interesting deity because as mentioned in previous deep dives, he is not a god at all but a giant. The story roughly goes that Odin went to Jotunheim to spy on the giants and got into some real trouble. Loki apparently saved him, and Odin made a blood oath to make Loki as a brother. Together they returned to Asgard, where Loki got into all kinds of mischief. He pulled pranks, some mean and hurtful and some innocent, but in the end he usually made up for his misdeeds by using either his shape-shifting powers or his magic. Well that is until one of his pranks killed Baldur with his mistletoe, like I mentioned earlier. And so Loki was damned to a life of imprisonment, and would be the catalyst for Ragnarok. Now there are a slew of gods and goddesses not mentioned here, like Vidur, Hod, Vail, Tyr, Sif, Mimir, Ir. But honestly, the list goes on and on and on, and we could spend days diving into the entire pantheon. On a final note, however, it should be known that the religions of the Norse were very much equal as far as sexes were concerned. The goddesses were not treated as less than because they were female, and in fact, they were revered possibly more. Researchers and historians recently discovered that Norse society was very equal in comparison to ancient religions. We tend to think of Vikings as marauders who killed and pillaged and raped their way across the seas. But back at home, the women ran everything because reading, writing, and math were considered magic and something only women were able to do. Women were also allowed to be shield matings and fought along the side of warriors and berserkers. So in that respect, Women ran the society that allowed their boys to run off and wage war everywhere. It's really cool and super progressive if you think about it. Anyways, I hope you learned something. Back to you, Noodle! Okay. Alright. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for that informative information. Let's carry on. We're almost to Helheim, people. We're almost there. for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. 
Get up. Get up and fight. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You failed the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's a curse. The shadow Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there's no one left to do that for you. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Do it. Come on. There. <laughs> Why go on, when you give everything and face that which torments you, only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined? Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling. A song. It's not real. It's a trick. It's not a real thing. It's real. Listen to it. She can't Did give up. Did it? It's not like this. It can't. It's not real. It's real. It's a trick. Don't trust it. Maybe you're already dead. Who are you? Do you stop believing me, Shadow? So our first fight with Hela, we didn't do very good. We lost our sword, or I should say we broke our sword. We got all kinds of fucked up. We're, uh, we're not feeling too good. Feeling a little hopeless, but that's all right. Dillian is here. There he is. What I like is um, 
all the voices that you're hearing, it's almost like we have fleeting thoughts in our heads that are just thoughts, you know, whatever. But she actually manifests Before them as voices. She, met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. Yeah, I like how Sin was also getting stronger as she keeps running towards the light. Um. I don't think there's a Druth stone here, but I could be wrong. I'd rather just take a moment to look around, if you don't mind. I'm sure you don't. We can all just kind of enjoy this. I think there's a face over here, too. Yep. Senua, there will be times that you will feel alone and exhausted, like a strange little fish swimming against the tides of the big ocean. But have the faith to let go and let the tide carry you away. Because the whole ocean is your home, and it does not ask you to swim against it. You know what's funny is that's actually really wise advice, you know, for anybody, really. All right, let's keep going. over there by the tree the lone figure of a boy so play under the shade of a tree oh she remembers the first time she saw him to her young eyes he moved as if dancing and the world danced with him the gloom lifted First time in years, she felt a ray of hope. So these are the Druth stones now. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try. But the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother, King Sigir, wants it. But Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast. But when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. kind of a dick move you find a cool sword and your brother's like bitch dibs and do it at sword point with an army I don't really remember what's up here oh it's another drift stone death for Sigmund and his brother seems certain but the king's wife is Sigmund's sister and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. 
She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, oh. Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. What clickbait? Reason number 15 why Sigmund's sister, Sigmund's wife sucks. Blew my mind. You won't believe it. Alright, so I believe this is Hella's Gate. We can't do anything with it. Not yet, anyway. It's like the back door to Helheim. Yeah. This isn't the front door. The front door had the cool, like, wood thing on it. Alright, let's go down this way. I think there's a ladder on the other side, but... It's fine. We'll cruise through this way. Dip our toes in the surf. Yeah, see, there's a ladder over there. Damn it. What clickbait? <laughs> Fucking Druid, you'll never guess what happens next. I don't know, man. What happens next? We're about to find out, I guess. As the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister, plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan. One that is cold of heart and pure of blood. Damn, that's cold. She's like, you're going to go help your uncle. And uh, all her kids are like, I. And then what happens? He fucking butchers them because they're all weak little bitches. Uh, I'm going to go check behind this thing. If, if there's nothing, I'll just cut back to Alright, yeah, it was just another way around. No big dealio. Yeah, see, it, it, it comes around this way. So all the paths kind of, like, wind into each other. Day after day, watching from afar, she mimicked him. Affecting her own secret dance. Wishing those fleeting moments of light would stretch out to last forever. Sigmund's sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, and finds him strong and fearless, and so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. Luck is not on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. Yeah, Sigir ain't fucking around, is he? All his kids dead, his wife cheated on him with her own brother.
place is fucking gorgeous. Look at this place. Just take it in for a moment. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I... I watched you. And... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide and don't tell her. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here. You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No. And all your suffering will have been for nothing. Shut up! There we go. All right, awesome. Can you see him? You want to believe it? Is he real? Is he real? You are alone in these mountains. Is that Dillion? Nothing lives here. We're gonna go ahead and call it here. These voices would ever shut up for a second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it, it seems like we didn't really do all that much, but this was a very story-centric part of the video. When we come back, we're gonna go ahead and explore the tree, and there's several worlds attached to this uh, as a heads up. So we'll be going to the worlds and hopefully trying to get a new sword so we can go back and fight Hela. Yeah.